Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. But remember, when you're thinking about that, the question is not how long are you going to live, but how long are you or your wife going to live, especially if you're the one with the higher number, right? Because if you defer in order to get that higher number, what you're doing really is you're preserving that higher number until the last of the two of you dies, right? So if you're in the classic man-woman situation, most of my older clients are women, right? Um, the men just died. They're all type A and they drop dead. And then the women kind of live on and have Alzheimer's kind of later in life. And, and, but if, if you're in that kind of situation, well then, you know, you, you may want to think about that. If one of you is going to live for a long time, then you may want to defer, unless there are strong, immediate financial reasons not to do that. Same thing with life expectancy. If, you know, you, you're trying to figure out your own health, but you're also looking at the health of your parents and of your, brothers, your older brothers and sisters and saying, so, you know, how am I going to figure out that equation? Uh, the need for income, obviously. Um, if you really need the income early, then you may be wanting to take the money. But I'm going to go back to the example that I started off with, my friend who had just told me, who owns a business and was just going to start taking these checks. It would keep working because you don't, he's 60 for retirement age, so he doesn't get penalized dollar-wise for being on Social Security and still working. Um, but the, but the, the issue for him was he said, I, I said, but, but, but Bobby, you have a lot of savings. I knew that. He, I knew him. He had quite a bit of savings. He had a lot of. He said, "Yeah, but if I pull that money out, I'm going to have to pay tax on it, right? I have money in my 401k and my IRA, and if I want to supplement my income, and this is really appropriate for people who are going to retire and take their money, if I want to supplement my income, if I pull my money out of my IRA or my or my 401k, I'm going to have to pay tax on that." And I said, "Yeah, Bobby, but the, the issue is you're going to pull this money out." and pay the tax, but you know, somebody's going to pay that tax sooner or later. So you think you have $300,000 in that IRA, but you don't. I mean, you really only have, after tax, $200,000 in the IRA, right? So the question is, what's going to give you the best return? Keeping that $200,000 you know, or whatever in that IRA over the next four years while taking your Social Security, right? Or using some of that IRA money while guaranteeing that for the rest of your life that Social Security check is going to go up by 32%, right? So you really want to weigh that out. It is not an obvious, the, that, the, that question of whether to take Social Security versus using some of your tax deferred or other money does not have an obvious answer. You really want to think that out. Now, you don't want to think that out just talking to your lawyer, right? You really want to have, think that out talking to your financial planner so that you can really do some projections regarding what you really think your investments are in your IRA or 401k are going to do. How does that compare to this? It's a math question, but just don't assume it. That's all. And I guess one, one of the other questions is do you plan to work? And really that's related to, the, to the, uh, the need for income. If you're planning on working anyway, so you're only kind of taking this money because it's there and so you don't want to be throwing it away, well, then you really should be thinking of your Social Security more as an investment and say, well, I don't, if I don't need to take it right now and I know that I'm getting this tremendous return on the money, maybe I want to wait. And then what are your survivor needs? So you want to kind of consider all of those things. But why delay? Just to once again, as, as an example, as an example, um, if, you're, if you're claiming at age 62, you're getting 75%, right? Um, and therefore you're getting $1,850. If you're claiming at age 70, and this is assuming that your, that your PIA was $2,466 at age 66. If you were claiming at 70, you're getting $3,255, right? And it grows relatively quickly, right? The, the, your benefit at age 70, if you claim at 62, is $2,300. If you claim it at seven, in, and, your, and your benefit at age 70, if you claim at age 70 is 4,000. Look at that number at 80, 
right? If you had claimed at 62, you're getting $3,000 a month. If you had waited until 70, you're getting $5,000 a month. They are, they, are significantly, they are significantly different numbers. So just go back to Frank and Mary. You know, you've got that house that's worth $400,000. Um, you've got, you've got some, you've got a, he's, he's got some 401k money, so he does have the ability to supplement his income to the extent that he wants to, right? Um, just a couple of other issues, taxes, if you folks are pr pretty much pro probably all aware of this, um, the way that the, your, your, your social security is subject to some taxation, the way that gets done, you want to talk to your accountant about what your numbers would look like, right? is that there's a calculation of your provisional income, uh, which is the income that you've, that you've earned uh, plus one half of your social security benefit plus your tax exempt interest. That's a bizarre little addition. Uh, and then the, your, your, based on that, there's a calculation of how much you're going to be paying. And you are going to be paying um, on up to 50% of your social security mon money depending on what bracket you're in. For the specifics, you really need to just kind of talk to your accountant about it. Um, one other issue, though, that I just want to talk about, because this is the issue that I talk about with people so often. Um, as I had mentioned when I started, a lot of the folks that I talk up to are doing planning because they're concerned about Alzheimer's or other diseases that cause dementia. Because the basic issue when you're retiring is that Medicare will take care of you if you get any major disease except Alzheimer's disease or the others that cause dementia. You get cancer and you need operations and you need chemo, Medicare's gonna cover all of that, right? You have dementia and you have a little trouble dressing in the morning or you need someone to kind of watch you so you don't walk out on the street, Medicare's gonna pay none of that. Um, it is Medicare, as, as I remember I did a recent, I, an article on this so I was doing some of the research on it. And when Medicare was created in 1965, over 30% of all people in America over 60 years old were poor, were poor, right? It's just hard to conceive of that now, right? That number now is under 7%, and the major reason I would suggest is Medicare. In 1965, when Medicare was created, Social Security had already been around for 30 years, and still over 30% of all Americans over age 60 were poor, and now it's under 7, right? So Medicare takes care of everybody except the players who have Alzheimer's. But if you have Alzheimer's, then you have to play this, this game in order to qualify for government benefits. Um, and the way that game works is as follows in Massachusetts. And, and once you understand that, I'm going through this because it affects, it does have an effect on the way you think about Social Security. So Frank and Mary, that was their situation. Remember, Frank has an income of $1,000 a month in a pension, and Mary has a, a thousand in, in job income. And then Mary gets sick and needs to go to a nursing home. Oh, let me do a quick quiz. If Mary goes into a nursing home and you saw the assets that Frank and Mary have, how many of you think that, that Frank and Mary are going to need to spend a significant amount of their money on nursing home care? If Mary is in a nursing home and needs to qualify for MassHealth, she, in order to do that, because Medicaid is, is, is health care for the poor as opposed to Medicare, which is health care for the old, right? Uh, Ma Mary has to show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets. But, but, Frank, who is still living at home, can own the home as long as it has an equity of less than $800,000, can have cash or cash equivalent assets of up to $117,560, like, you know, the, the 401k that he has and all of that cash. He can keep up to that amount. But most importantly, he can have infinite income he can have infinite income. There is no income test for the spouse in Massachusetts. And under Mass so under Massachusetts regulations, what Frank and Mary could do if Mary needed nursing home care is Mary could simply transfer the house to Frank as long as it has an equity of less than 800,000. She could transfer all those cash assets to Frank. Remember Frank had the 401k, but they had some joint asset. They had some cash in common. You transfer everything to Frank. Frank can go out and buy an annuity, which is an income stream from an insurance. An annuity is a, you all know this, but an annuity is a contract with an insurance company. You give them money. In return, they, reach, they promise to give you back an amount of money on a regular basis for a term. As long as the annuity that Frank purchases calls for the regular payment back to him monthly 
over a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy, and remember he's 66 years old, so his life expectancy is 15 years. Uh, as long as he purchases that kind of annuity, he can purchase it in any amount. He can take all of his cash, thereby, or at least the amount that puts him over 117,000 and buy that annuity, and a day later, Mary can qualify for Mass Health because she has less than $2,000 because she transferred it all to Frank. He owns the house. He has cash or cash equivalents of less than $117,560, right? So, as it applies to the Social Security case, right? And this is important if you think that this may be an issue for you. The issue is once Mary has qualified for Mass Health, which she will, the Mass Health rule is all of her income needs to go to the nursing home. All of her income needs to go to the nursing home, right? Um, Frank's income, Frank can keep his income. But Social Security is income. So reverse this. Assume that Frank was going to the nursing home and we shifted everything to Mary, right? But she had, but they had spent down some of their cash or cash equivalent assets because they had followed my advice. They had said, well, we're going to balance everything out here. We're going to wait until Frank is as old as is 70 before he starts collecting so that he can get the maximum possible benefit. And therefore, we're going to use our other cash, right? So now Frank's got this big check that's coming in. If Frank qualifies for nursing home care, Frank's check is going to the nursing home, right? Mass Health will pay the difference between that check and whatever the nursing home bill is, right? That's good. So if Mary went and Mary had a very, very low income, that would all work fine. But if Frank went, it wouldn't work so fine. So to the extent that you have health issues, once again, look at your family, look at your own health that you maybe want to, concern, may want to be concerned about. To that extent, it may profit Frank and Mary to keep flexibility by keeping their money in cash or cash equivalents that they can move around in the event that one of them needs nursing home care. Um, there are a lot of issues, like, and I guess I use the mass health example just by way of example to say, you're li you know your lives. You know, I can tell you some general principles, right? But only you know kind of how all of these things fit into your life. The real answer is you want to figure it out. You want to do the math. When you're doing the math, as I've mentioned this before, don't count on your lawyer to do the math. Most of us went to law school because we couldn't do the math, right? Or we didn't want to, right? So work with your financial advisor and your accountant, but talk to your lawyer to see what the correct structure is. If you want to see this show again, that's my YouTube channel. Just, you, can just, you can use that complicated thing or you can just Google Elder Law Frank and Mary and see this or any of the presentations that I have done regarding a number of Elder Law issues. And this is my, the goal, this is my goal, um, is to help everybody sleep well at night. If none of this is relevant to you, then you just kind of came out for a while and you get to use the, have the cookies here at Sherbin Commons and that was great. If it is relevant to you, then maybe it's just helped you clarify the things that you need to think about. Thank you very much.